Hallelujah. Are we blessed, church? Yes. Amen. Are we blessed? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you are here with us this afternoon. God is here. Amen. Amen. Thank you that the Lord has blessed us with that awesome and wonderful praise and worship, that the Lord bless us with those um, uh, wonderful and uh, heartful um, testimony, those prayers, the opportunity to bless the Lord in His works, and for the life of the youth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready, church? Hallelujah. If you are ready, can I invite each and every one? to uh, stand up and uh, welcoming the scripture, the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord in First Peter, chapter 2, verse 6, up until verse 8. For it says in the scripture, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. But to you who believe this, this stone is precious. But those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a stone that causes man to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Thank you for reading of the scriptures. Father, indeed thank you that you have graced us with your presence and with your company this afternoon. Thank you for the lives of your servants, our dear brothers and sisters who stood here in the pulpit, Father God, in ministry and service. Thank you very much for their lives. Father, we just thank you so much as well for the wonderful opportunity and privilege to hear your words again this afternoon. We invite the presence, the company, and the power of your Holy Spirit to be the revelator of the word for us this afternoon. Father, we pray for each and every one. Soften our spiritual senses that we may receive fully the words that you want to share to us this afternoon. Lord, your humble servant continues to humble himself in your presence. And Father, hide me behind you. Hide me with the precious blood of your son Jesus. Hide me with your mercies, grace, and love so that not this human facade is going to be the one to be considered but your glory that shines upon me. Father, we take authority over all the works of the enemy and we rebuke any disturbances, any hindrances that will try to take away our opportunity to receive you this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe next time i-apply siguro, i-apply natin yung mga asher, Sister Grace, para punuin muna natin itong mga roast na to before there. Otherwise, we, we have to move the stage closer uh, halfway. Amen? So, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, when you come back next Sunday, you uh, aim for these uh, chairs in the front. Amen? Hallelujah. Can I ask each and every one? It says in the passage that we have read 
that Jesus is our chief cornerstone. Amen. Amen. Can we declare that this afternoon? Jesus, Amen. you are our chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So uh, here, Apostle Peter was quoting an earlier scripture from the Old Testament. In Isaiah chapter 28 verse 6, the, the very same passage that we have read, it says in here, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation, whoever believes will not be in haste. Amen. There is a, a song, diba? There is a song that, uh, the, the uh, cornerstone, and there is that uh, uh, precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a stone. You remember or you know that song? Yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. We'll sing that tomorrow. <laughs> hallelujah. Psalms 118 verse 22, it says in here, that the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Amen. So the title of our Albert, our brother Albert, asked earlier today, Pastor, what's the title of our message? And said that, yes, Jesus is our cornerstone. Amen. Do we all know what does a cornerstone means? Because in order for us to understand the message this afternoon, we need to understand what a cornerstone is. Amen? The cornerstone is also called, or it's also known as, a foundation stone. It is also called as the setting stone. I know the men's in here, they do DIY. And you apply usually uh, the cornerstone or the chief cornerstone, a foundation stone, a setting stone. Usually, my dear brothers and sisters, this is very important in building masonry. Masonry meaning any structure that you build that uh, out of stones, bricks, mortars, these are called Masonry, my dear brothers and sisters. And when we say a cornerstone, a foundation stone, or a setting stone, it must be the very first stone that is being laid out. Amen? It must be the very first stone that will be laid out, and all the other stone that will be built upon or that will be built alongside with, it should be in a line with the cornerstone, with the chief cornerstone or with the foundation stone. Amen. Maybe the closest DIY in masonry that I uh, did was uh, the fencing. When you do bricks in fencing, what you consider the cornerstone, the foundation stone, or the setting stone must be the very first stone that you set. And then, isn't it, you, uh, men's DIY, you lay out a cord into the other end so that all the bricks that you will put, it's gonna be aligned. Amen? It's gonna be aligned. So when we see, uh, when we say the cornerstone is the foundation stone or the setting stone, it is the very first stone that is being laid out when you are building a masonry work. And like what we have said, every other stone that goes with it or goes on top of it or goes alongside it, it must be measured with the cornerstone. It must be aligned with the cornerstone. Amen? So like what I have mentioned, the example is the cornerstone is what every workman use as a reference in 
Alignment. Amen. It is every workman's reference in alignment. So that before they, they, they check the alignment, they will always uh, refer at the very first stone that was laid. The corner stone. Amen. To determine the measurement. Amen, church. And uh, if you are a masonry worker, you, if you are a skilled, if you are a good masonry worker, is you will make sure that every brick, every stone that you will lay will be in a line with the cornerstone. Amen, church. Because if it's not a line, if you are building, if you're asking a builder to build you a fence, and if it's not a line, I believe that you have the right to tell them, I'm not going to pay you. I am not satisfied. It is not a line. <laughs> and remember, my dear brothers and sisters, especially during the time that when they are building structures during the time, there is no such thing as cement. So everything, you know when you go to Baguio, we, we call the term kabite. Uh, do, have you heard the word kabite? Or in English, we call it riprap. So in Baguio, if we are building a wall, if we are building a structure in the olden way, it's a way of putting stone on top of the others without using a cement. But, but they are very skilled in a way that those stone interlock with each other. That they interlock with each other. That's why even with calamities, they are strong. Amen. And I believe that, I think, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the Philippines, uh, the Cordilleras or Baguio is the only place that does that. Amen. You know, if you, if you are going to Baguio, if you're passing through Kenon, Marcos Highway, or Nagilian, you see those stones that were put on top of the other. And sometimes you marvel because it's very obvious that there is no cement applied to them. But those masonry builders, they are very good. I tried, but I'm not skilled. So you can tell the difference if you are skilled or not. Because those skilled people, it would, it's as if Lego. You know those Lego or jigsaw pieces that one stone can fit the other? Amen. So uh, I hope that we understand masonry a little bit. Now my dear brothers and sisters, no? If that is the use of the cornerstone to those masonry builder, the Bible, the passage that we have used, use or refer to Jesus metaphorically as the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Amen. And it says in here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, for no one can lay a foundation. No one can lay a foundation other than that which was already being laid. Who is this? Jesus Christ. That's the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone as a believer, as a Christian of our life. Amen, church? What does it mean? I borrow the encouragement of Sister Lorna earlier that you have dreams. Yeah? You have dreams in your life. Who among us in here has no dreams in our life? Every one of us has dreams in our life. Amen? Amen? But because we came to faith in the Lord, because we are now a believer of the Lord, in which Jesus is our cornerstone, our dreams should be aligned with that cornerstone. Amen. Yes, every one of us has dreams, but as a believer, we are being encouraged that whatever those dreams are, whatever those aspirations are in life, must be aligned with our cornerstone. 
with our chief cornerstone. Amen, church? That's why this church or this body is called Christ is our rock. Christ is the rock of our foundation. Amen? Christ is the rock. Christ is our cornerstone. There is no one else, my dear brothers and sisters. So as a body, however small we are, and every member that that rock, Matthew 6, 18, that rock should be our foundation stone. That rock is the foundation of what we do. And that rock is no other than Jesus Christ. Amen, church? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, 21. Having built on the foundation, no, our faith, our belief in the Lord, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. It is through them that we came to know the Lord. It is through the word of God that, was, that were handed down from generation, beginning from the apostles to generation, my dear brothers and sisters, became the foundation of our faith. Amen? And it says in there that Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen? Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, Apostle Paul said that everything that we build on top should be built upon that foundation stone. Amen. You know, whatever it is that we are doing, like we say, preparing, the believe, preparing a believer in the walk with the Lord, the vision of this church, the mission of this church, that we evangelize outside, we encourage them to come to the body of Christ, while they are in the body of Christ, we continue to nurture them in faith. We usher their growth in the foundation. We disciple them. We train them up until they are ready to be a part of the ministry. Up until they are ready to come and stand in the front. Everything that we are doing, my dear brothers and sisters, there might be differentiation in approach, but my dear brothers and sisters, there is a foundation laid already. Amen, church? We are not laying a foundation in the life of these children. There is already a foundation in there. Everything that we are doing is just we are building on top of that foundation. Amen, church? But there is no other foundation but Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah! Who is our cornerstone? Who is our chief cornerstone? Who is the foundation of our faith? Amen? Hebrews 12, 2, it says in there that Jesus is the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Amen, church? Jesus is our foundation. Jesus is our cornerstone. If indeed Jesus is our foundation, and if indeed Jesus is our cornerstone, then as we live our lives day by day, as we chase our ideals and dreams, we should always go back and check that it is aligned with the foundation stone. Amen, church? You know, the declaration of faith of uh, Sister Blessy, that I will be the best daughter that Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit had. Amen? It's a very bold declaration in Jesus' name. And we're gonna pray with you on that. We're gonna uh, walk along that journey with that. 
But in reality, we need to make sure that we keep on checking it so that it really is aligned with that foundation stone. Amen, church? Amen? Amen. If we continue, it says in there in 1 Peter chapter 9, verse 10, But you are now a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, people of His own possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of the darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you had received mercy. Amen, church? Is it not an awesome promise? That once we are not a people, once we are not a people, once we are alienated from God, once we do not belong to God, once we do not participation, we do not have a participation in God. Concerning in the matter of faith, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the Old Testament, there are migration as well. In the Old Testament, there is a temple built as a middle, as a centra, center of worship. And who are the people coming to worship in this temple? Anyone? Who are the people coming to worship in the temple? All the world comes to worship in this temple. The Jewish nation comes to worship in the temple. But you know the difference? The Jewish nation, they can step inside. The Gentiles, they are just outside. Worshipping, hoping for this God of the Jew to hear their worship. Just imagine, you came with your coat in tie to worship with us and we say, no, you are only up until outside, you cannot come in. It says in there, once we are not a people, once we do not a hold, we do not have hold about this God who is called love. Once we do not have a hold about this mercy and grace that is called. But because of Jesus Christ, He has laid it all. Amen, church. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Because without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. If your sin is not forgiven, then you remain an outsider. If your sin is not forgiven, then you are not you remain not a people. Whatever it is that you will do, magpakabait ka dyan, wag kang magkasala, but I assure you, you have no participation in the kingdom of God. Because it is not what it is that we do, it is not what our goodness, it is not our charity that reconcile us with God. No one reconciles us with God except himself. Amen, church? Though we are still sinners, Christ shed his blood for us. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Because of Jesus Christ, because of that blood, you became a chosen generation. Amen? Because of that blood, you became a royal priesthood. Because of that blood, you became a holy nation. 
Because of that blood, you became God's special possession. A peculiar people. Amen. But now, my dear brothers and sisters, that God through Christ has laid everything. God said, it is me who laid the cornerstone. What is the cornerstone? What is the foundation of our faith? John 3.16 that God gave His only begotten Son to be the foundation of everything. Amen. And what did He say? That all must believe in Christ. All must conform their lives to that cornerstone. Amen, church. Declare the praises of Him who called us out in the dark and to His wonderful light. Amen, church. Amen. And when we talk about praises and worship to the Lord, it's more than singing. It's more than jumping. It's more than crying. It's more than shouting hallelujah. The best praise and worship that we can give to the Lord is leading a life of commitment in conformity to His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen, church. Whoever you are, this was the one message few Christmas ago that we have given. Whoever you are, my dear brothers and sisters, all the superlative talent, skills, giftings that you have, it is in the Lord's good pleasure to give it to you. Amen. It is in the Lord's good pleasure to give it to you. You cannot earn it. But what you become, how are you going to live your life? Is the best worship and is the best praise that you can give to the Lord. Amen, church? Singing, shouting hallelujah, coming to church, these are expression of worship. Amen. But the best worship that we can give to the Lord is living in conformity with His Son, with His words. Amen. Amen. That was the message on our midweek Bible study. The parable of the wedding banquet. Those prior invited who did not respond to the invitation. So Jesus extended the invitation to the outsiders, which are us. Because the kingdom was initially intended for the Jews. But they declined the invitation. It says in there to some, they have even captured the messenger of the Lord and they murdered them. One of them is Christ. So Jesus extended the invitation to the Gentile nation. So that's why we had an integration. But in the distant time to come in the future, we are all going to be standing in that wedding banquet. Amen. Will you be the one that the master will come because he noticed that you are not wearing the prescribed appropriate wedding clothes? You are already in the wedding banquet, my dear brothers and sisters. You have already accepted Christ as your Savior in Messiah. What do we need to do now is to make sure that we dress our life in conformity to the prescribed wedding banquet clothing. Amen, church? For in that day, Jesus said, Matthew 7, 21 to 23. For in that day, 
Many will come to me saying, we belong to this place. But what did Jesus said? Not everyone who wishes or desire to be in that place can indeed be in that place. Because the people who can be in that place are the ones who does the will of my Father in heaven. And what is the will of the Father in heaven? He has laid Christ to be the chief cornerstone. Therefore, every one of us must conform, must align our life with the chief cornerstone. That is the will of God. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Who is our cornerstone? Jesus Christ. So if Jesus is our cornerstone, we must align our lives in Christ. As we build our lives daily, inside our home, at work, in the community, in the church that we are part of, as we build our lives daily, we have to make sure that we are building it in conformity, in alignment with the cornerstone. Amen, church? Amen? Says in there, focus your eyes unto Jesus. Amen? Focus your eyes unto Jesus. Nothing is stopping you in pursuing and chasing for your dreams, but let those pursuant will not take your focus of Jesus Christ. Amen, church. Amen? Amen. We are encouraged to pursue and develop relationship with others, friendship with others. We are challenged to pursue career in life. We are challenged to pursue all the good gifts because every good, good gifts comes from heaven above. Amen. Amen, church. But let us make sure that we are focused on the giver and not on the gift. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if we fail to focus, if we fail to align our lives with the Lord, Apostle Paul said, like Hymenius, we are going to be a shipwreck in faith. Amen. Amen. So let us make sure that we align our lives because otherwise we are going to be a spiritual casualty, my dear brothers and sisters. We're going to be a spiritual casualty. The scripture said in Psalms 127.1, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it, those laborers will labor in vain. Amen, church. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. Amen, church. So an encouragement to us all. I don't know, are there young couples in here? Young couples... As you try to build a family, as you try to build your household, children, as you try to pursue your dreams and careers, and each and every one of us, even in the ministry, whatever it is that we are doing in the ministry, if it is not founded in the Lord, whatever it is that we are doing is in vain. Whatever it is that we are doing is in vain. Amen, church. 
Let the Lord be the center of what we are doing. Let the Lord be the center of everything in us. Amen, church? You know, it reminds me a story when I used to work in Israel. One of the uh, elder gentlemen that uh, I used to care for was um, uh, a retired, an elder historian. And uh, he was uh, one of the leader of the uh, Jewish Zionist movement that were coming out of uh, Mauritius. Because what happened, my dear brothers and sisters, is um, uh, the Israelites were scattered all over the world. That's why they were called the wandering Jew, because they were scattered all over the world. But uh, when uh, the British relinquished the care of uh, Israel in 1947, and the United Nations agreed for the creation of the state of Israel, there was a lot of movement from other nations, other countries, that they called like the Zionist movement. Zionist movement, my dear brothers and sisters, their aim, their goal is the gathering together of the scattered people, children of Israel overseas, to come back to the land, to be protected. Amen? And this uh, elder gentleman that I used to care for uh, was coming out of the group of the Jewish that were uh, scattered in Mauritius. And his story, obviously, he, he is aware that I am a Christian. He is aware that I am a, a believer. And there is a story that I remember once that uh, he shared to me. It probably must be a famous story. And this story happens during the time when they were building the Solomon's Temple. Amen? When they were building the Temple of God, the Solomon's Temple, it was the first temple to the Lord. There were two temples. The first one was the Solomon Temple. And when it was destroyed, they rebuilt it. It became the uh, Herod, Herodian Temple. Amen. So during the, cre the, the building of the first temple or the Solomon's Temple, my dear brothers and sisters, it so happened that they said that all the stone, yeah, we're talking about masonry, all the stone that were used in building the temple, they were sourced out from a quarry elsewhere. Amen? They were sourced out from a quarry elsewhere and the people in the quarry, they were so skilled, my dear brothers and sisters, that they prepare each and every piece of the stone back in the quarry land. And they are clearly labeled in order to, um, to show, in order to advise where each and every stone will fit. Okay, so like a Lego piece, like a jigsaw piece, I believe that now, that's what, I, I mean, you pass by one uh, street in here, it's just um, uh, a vast land. And after a few weeks you pass, there is already a house stood in it. Because it so happened that what's happening now, they reproduce everything in the factory. They already produce everything in the factory. They bring to a place and again, it's like a Lego set. So it's the same what happened in the temple. That everything was prepared in the quarry. Everything was cut into perfection. Everything was labeled exactly where they are going to fit, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? That's the reason why it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, no? Because everything was prepared in a, in a way where everything fit together. Amen? It says in there that if you are passing by or people in the community, they cannot hear machine or tools by the, the, the builders building the temple. Wala silang naririnig na kitok. Wala silang, they, they cannot hear any sound, any noise, any words. It confirms the word in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7 that says in here, in the temple when it was being built, 
was built with the stone finished at the quarry, so that no hammer or chisel or any iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. Wow! Hallelujah! You know, we are marveling how does the people of old build that pyramid? Esqualado! Perfect, uh, uh, what's that? Um, uh, triangle. If you see, obviously now, the old temple, you cannot see a stone standing on top of the other. That's what Jesus prophesied. But if you go to the tunnel underneath, yeah, there is the Temple Mount, Temple Institute for uh, uh, building the temple. There is a tunnel. You go to the tunnel and you can see those stones that were used in the temple before. There are irregular shape of stone. There are, they are not all flat. And to be honest, one stone as well can be a size of a dump truck. Hallelujah. But it so happened, my dear brothers and sisters, like what I have said, that all the stones were labeled to show where they fit. It so happened that before that, there was a stone that they received from the quarry that were not labeled. There is no labeling in it. So meaning the builder doesn't know where this stone goes. So they thought among themselves that maybe the people in the quarry sent us a stone by mistake. So what did they do? They discarded that stone. They segregated that stone. And weeds, mga damo, weeds have grown in that stone. The stone was lost. And it so happened that when building the temple, those builders cannot move forward. Why? They cannot put another layer. They cannot put another label because something is missing. Something is lacking. They cannot find what's supposed to be the cornerstone. So they told the people in the quarry, you did not send us the cornerstone. The people in the quarry said, no, we sent you already. So there is a big debate, big fight. My dear brothers and sisters. And it's so up until someone stumbled on that stone. So it says in there, the stone that the builder rejected has indeed became the chief cornerstone. So my dear brothers and sisters, the choice now is in us. We know that Christ is our chief cornerstone. Nasa sa atin na yon. It is in us. Are we going to reject that cornerstone? Or are we going to accept that cornerstone? If you accept that cornerstone, my dear brothers and sisters, meaning you build your life alongside that stone. Amen? You build your life in conformity with that stone. But if you reject it, my dear brothers and sisters, it says in there, your work is in vain. Your work is in vain. Because whatever it is work that you do, if it is not in conformity with the cornerstone, my dear brothers and sisters, you can never build. You can never rebuild. Amen? Amen? So really, as an ending to our message today, I just want to remind us of the passage in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears this word of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who build his house on the truck. The truck is Jesus. The truck is our cornerstone. Amen, church? 
So really personally, my prayer, my desire, I know that that's what the Lord's purpose in the message this afternoon is. We have heard the message that Jesus is our chief cornerstone. So it is for us now to build our life, to live our day-to-day -day life in align, in conformity to that chief cornerstone. Amen. Because if you do that, the Bible calls you wise. Amen, church. Wise are the children, wise are the man who heard the word of God and they put it into practice. Amen, church. Because if we do not, then the Bible calls us foolish. Foolish because why? We know what we ought to do. We know how we ought to live our life. But we don't do it. So my dear brothers and sisters, that is what the church is for. Church is not for perfect people. I'm sure you saw that in Facebook. Hospital is for the sick people. You bring sick people to the hospital so that they will get well. In the same way that church is not a place for perfect people. Church is a place for sinners. Church is a place for imperfect people. Church is a place for people who, has, uh, who are ill spiritually and emotionally. So they come to church to get well. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah? Amen. But if you are a sick people emotionally, spiritually, and you come to church, eh dapat naman, you allow yourself to be healed. Amen, church? You allow yourself to be healed. You listen. You listen. You allow yourself to be healed. Because there is no point coming and going out the same, coming away the same. My dear brothers and sisters, our desire is whatever investment in the kingdom that we are doing, that it's not going to be in vain. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we bring back the music team? Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. You are our cornerstone. You are our cornerstone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we've said that uh, Jesus is our cornerstone. And uh, the foundation of all is the blood of Jesus that was shed out in the Calvary 2,000 years ago. But that blood of Jesus is powerful and potent up until this very moment. Amen. Can I ask each and everyone to stand up? And let's worship the Lord. Let us honor the Lord. Let me 
not a people but now you are the people of God once you had not received mercy but now you have received mercy a 
challenging question from the pulpit this afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. A question to provoke our faith in the Lord this afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. How is your life? Is your life in conformity, in alignment with the chief cornerstone? In Tagalog, kumusta ang buhay natin, kapatid? Tayo ba ay namumuhay alinsunod? Naaayon sa buhay pundasyon na niluloob ng ating Panginoon sa ating buhay. How is our life, my dear brothers and sisters? Are we living our life in alignment and in conformity? to that chief cornerstone. Because this afternoon, we have a very invitation for us to come, to start, to begin, to decide, to live our life in a manner worthy of the faith that we profess. I want to take this moment for each and every one of us to ponder. Let us take a moment or two and ponder the status, the situation of our lives. It could be that our life is made. It could be that our life was well set up. It could be that we even come from a wealthy and affluent family. That our life today has been pre-prepared by the hardship by the works of our parents. So it could be, my dear brothers and sisters, that you have been working hard in the past years and are now reaping the stability, the stable life that you have been so desiring, that you have been so planning, especially for us people who came from overseas and now are settled in the UK. And because of the UK settlement system that we are enjoying and reaping the good life that one will consider blessed. My dear brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord says, What does it profit a man or a woman in that context if he or she gains the whole world and yet he or she forfeits his soul? How are we living our life at this very moment? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you happy? Are you satisfied with your life? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord if that's the case. Now let's reverse the question. Is the Lord happy and satisfied in your life? So my dear brothers and sisters, just want to take this brief moment 
for all of us to ponder and say that, Lord, am I currently in alignment with the chief cornerstone? <coughs> am I living my day to day in accordance with the will of the Father? you know there is an open invitation for us this afternoon the invitation to turn our lives around the invitation the opportunity to let our life be built in alignment with the chief cornerstone Father God. Ask the Lord, Church. Lord, ask the Lord a personal question. Every one of us. Lord, who am I that you are so mindful of me? Lord, who am I that you are so mindful of me. Who am I, Lord, that once I was not a people? Who am I, Lord, that once I do not receive mercy and grace? Who am I, Lord, that once I am not the recipient of your love. But thank you because now I am a people of God. I thank you because now I now receive mercy and grace. I thank you because now I now receive your love. Thank you that now I am now a chosen people. I am now a holy nation. I am now a royal priesthood. I am now your special possession. I am now adopted into your household, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. And Father, there is nothing else that I can do but to declare a praises and worship to your name who called me out of that darkness into your wonderful presence through Christ. Thank you, Lord, because I have now the opportunity and privilege to live my life aligned in conformity with Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone of my faith, the chief cornerstone of my life, the chief cornerstone of my being. Amen, church? Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Let us end today's service. Father, thank you that you are our chief cornerstone, O Jesus. Thank you for giving us the privilege to be called your children this afternoon. Renewing that opportunity for um, us to come and step into your family, into your household. And thank you so much, Father God. We do not want to miss this, that chance. We do not want to miss that opportunity, O Lord. Thank you so much, our Lord Holy Spirit. Continue to walk with each and every one of us. Help us recognize. Help us enable to continue to walk in conformity with the life of your Son, Jesus Christ. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.